birds soaring through the mist. They took us captive, prisoners, to buy our freedom with animal furs. They took our daughters hostages to buy our lives with their bodies and illnesses we never had. They brought us liquor we drank and so remain in bondage till this day. All the museums throughout the world celebrate one day in particular, and it's usually May 18th each year, and they choose a theme. This year they chose um, the Year of Indigenous People because the United Nations uh, declared that 1993, we'll see that had to do with the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus. It's our theme also, celebrating Alaska's Indigenous people. And when People talk about indigenous that are native to an area, that were here. These were people that were here before the Europeans, before the Russians came here. Um, different uh, Eskimo, Al Athabascan tribes, um, native peoples. Generally, when one culture comes in and dominates another, they try and absorb that culture. There seems to be a resurgence at this point in time of appreciation for diversity of culture. Why do you think that is, and how are you helping that take place? Well, um, I think it's because people are recognizing that America can be more than just a melting pot, and that we each have uh, wonderful things about our individual cultures. And certainly, the native peoples are beginning to um, celebrate their culture, and s because for years they felt poorly about it and were treated poorly, of course, by us. So um, now they're starting to resurrect their culture, their language, and keep the new ways, but also adopt many of their traditional ways that um, brought them lots of wisdom and a uh, nice way of living. Athabascan people are, that's our, there are many of us. Uh, all the way from here in Alaska, we go up north and on down through into the, uh, the Lapan Apaches and the Apaches and Navajo are also Athabascan. But uh, the, our Athabascan people are unique in one respect. We are the only Athabascan people who live on water. We don't know what happened, why we took up maritime life, but we did, which meant that we had to learn a whole new way of life and add the the marine way of life and the marine food and everything into our daily lifestyle. Uh, and we have lived close enough to the Aleuts that there are a lot of their words in our language and also Eskimo words that we use, like the, the word for skin boat, the Aleut word for skin boat is Baidarka. Our Denaina, Kenaitse Indian word for skin boat is Baidarki. So you can see they both come from the same place. And then we picked up some words from the, from the English language. Uh, when the traders, when the traders came, they, they came in sloops and they had one sail, okay. They were sloops. So our word for a boat with a sail on it is schlup. So it shows how we, you know, the way we use things. Uh, our, there are quite a few people in our tribe. Uh, I say we have about close to 700, but we are scattered worldwide. Uh, but we do have 
we don't own any land. We don't have any land. We don't don't have anything like that. The only thing we have is our culture, and we have just, in the past few years, come back to our culture, to our own way of life. Uh, to us, the tribal, the tribalness is a heart sense of heart thing. It's not. It's not going on a reservation, and it's not dancing the dances or singing the songs as, as much as it is a thing of your heart of, of being Denina. Do you think that that is why there has been a resurgence in interest, is because people are missing something in their heart, and they're looking for ways of recapturing it? Uh, yes, that uh, that's true uh, for a lot of people who are Indian people but are not living as Indian, or are not admitting that they are Indian, uh, they find they have a sense they don't quite fit. And I know that I did not fit for many years. It wasn't until I found out that I was 7 sixteenths Indian that I finally found where I fitted. Uh, this storytelling that I do for the tribe now has been really great for me. Uh, it just worked into it. I worked into it without even realizing I was getting into it because uh, the last speaker of our tribe, Peter Kalifornsky, who is terminally ill with cancer right now, he was the only one who left who spoke our language. And he was asked to go into the schools one day and, and do a presentation. So he asked me if I would go with him. And f from that, we kept doing it and doing it. And uh, I learned more and more and more. And uh, pretty soon, I was being asked to tell the stories. And it isn't something I would have asked to be doing, but I, f I find myself doing it, and I started writing poetry. A lot of it is poetry about my people. Uh, as long as you've got the microphone here, I have, I have a poem that I we had, they had a, a mural that was done by um, Olivia Jemansky, and it's about the landing of the Russians. So I was asked if I would write a poem for that. Uh, one was one was read, and the other one wasn't. Uh, they came in ships. Strange ships, a strange death, sudden death, loud cracking in the air. They brought needles, shiny metal that twinkled as we stitched our furs, did not name. They changed our lives with beads and their god and other strange new things. That one get out of the way before I could write that one. They came in ships, strange ships like white birds soaring through the mist. They took us captive, prisoners to buy our freedom with animal furs. They took our daughters hostages to buy our lives with their bodies. They brought us death by gunshot and illnesses we never had. They brought us liquor we drank and so remain in bondage till this day. So a great deal of forgiveness and growth was required on the part of, the, of your people to be able to stand and open your arms, as I understand, to those people that, that have the heart space to join. Is that correct? That's correct. Very much so. We have, uh, there were a lot of good people who came, but there were a lot of people who came uh, with, with greed in their hearts and, uh, you know, looking for a get-rich-quick scheme. Uh, we see that yet today, you know. I think we'll always see that in any any country, but uh, we're getting by. So, in teaching about the heart, how do you teach about the heart? How do you, how do you help people reconnect with their heart space? And what kind of stories do you tell that that teach them to go beyond the greed? We have all of our stories. All the stories I tell are teaching stories, and. Uh, they either carry the history or teaching. Uh, many of the stories tell of people who ha were sad for some reason or other. There was a lot of sadness, and how by doing good for someone else, they found out that they could get, they could forget their sadness and forget themselves. Um, and there are stories of, oh, like being kind to the animals, being kind to Mother Earth, not wasting, and. So many of these teaching stories, they take you out of yourself. And you find yourself uh, putting yourself in the other person's shoes, in the place of the animal, and thinking about how they feel, which takes you back to the heart. You know, And pretty soon, your heart is so filled with all these things that other people and other animals you know, 
and Mother Earth does. Uh, I tell the story of Sleeping Lady Mountain, you know, uh, and Sleeping Lady Mountain will be there until there is peace, until there is no more war. And peace won't come, according to the legend, the way I tell it, until there is no more prejudice in the world, not just no more fighting, but no more prejudice, where people love each other regardless of the color of their skin, the way they wear their hair, or where they come from, and also peace with Mother Earth, and not raping and ravaging Mother Earth for money, and uh, not abusing the animals. You know? Well, it's the Kanaisi Indian tribe. They're the ones who have organized and gotten everything together and for one reason and well for many reasons. Kalifornsky who has taught us the songs and um, taught us, you know, the movements and everything. He has always said whoever is willing to listen is more than welcome to sing his songs. And that's the Denina people. And the tribe has always gone gone with that. And they're really accepting of a lot of people and I, I really respect that because Sometimes you get um, some groups that aren't too accepting because they're not the same ethnic group or some other gender, whereas the Kanaisi Indian tribe have really, you know, they, they are very open-minded and they really want to keep the culture alive. And they have many members of their own um, uh, members. In addition to um, the music, mm -hmm. it's more than just music. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, it's it's more like a feeling because a lot of the songs they use them in um, say like while they're working like um, Dia Do was like a second song that the people had learned from the Raven a long time ago that's where they originated from they they say a long time ago when the animals used to talk that they used to get um, a lot of their songs from animals and the Raven was the the main one and that was like one of the second songs that they had learned so um, that was a song that a boy he didn't he didn't really know how to ask somebody to play instead and he sang it and sung it and that became a song they just whatever happened in life they made songs up so it's making history How do you think the music and the things that you're doing now are helping your younger brothers and sisters? I think that it's keeping the culture alive for one thing. And the music brings people in to learn the language. And the language is so important because if the language and the songs aren't learned in this generation, they will be lost. That's how I really feel. And um, being in the group, the kids, you know, the dancers, the younger dancers, they're the ones that are keeping it alive because if they learn these songs, when they grow up, they'll be in my position and they can teach other, another generation. So it's really important for them to learn um, that there's, you know, we're getting a whole bunch of people more and more interested in it. Adults, um, elders are remembering. They're, they're wanting to come, they're wanting to share. And that's the most important is getting elders um, adults, young adults, um, children, babies together. Our group is just scattered from one years old all the way to ad uh, elders. So basically, basically you are collecting and regathering a culture with what you're doing. Yeah, and all of us, like I said, you know, the Jabila, Jabila Ina dancers, they're from many different regions and everybody shares each other, you know, shares what they know. But the Denina people have brought us together.